calories per gram of all three nutrients. So that you should know by now, right? That's step number one. I know the calories per gram. What is it? One gram of carb, one gram of protein, and one gram of lipid. Four calories, four calories, and nine calories. Okay. Now, what would be the primary purpose of eating carbohydrates? Immediate energy. Immediate energy. Okay. Primary purpose of proteins? Repair. Repair structure, right? Re rebuilding our body. And primary purpose of lipids? To energy. store them, but stored energy or also long term. Yeah, same thing. Mm. What else do we use lipids for? It's Insulation. Violent. That's right. So it keeps our body warm. That's really the primary, one of the primary reasons why uh, why fats they get stored in the hypodermis and that maintains body heat, not losing heat, keeping it. Thermal regulation, but maintaining warmth. Okay, so this is kind of like in a nutshell the purpose of the three. Now, if if we are eating proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, and breaking them down to amino acids, fatty acids, and glucose molecules, what kind of process is that? Anabolic or catabolic? Catabolic. Catabolic. Now, if I take this carbo, um, if I take glucose and I want to create glycogen, what kind of process is that? Well, catabolic or anabolic? Catabolic. You sure? Wait, you're breaking it down or building it? Well, you tell me. <laughs> it's taking glucose and making glycogen. That's anabolic. Which one? Anabolic. anabolic. That's right. Now, if we have amino acids, Wait, what was that process anabolic. It's the, yes, but it is an example, in terms of met metabolic processes, it's an example of an anabolic process because we are using small molecules to create something larger. And so glucose to glycogen is forming polysaccharides. Poly means many, much larger molecules. Okay, now what if I have amino acids and I'm building hemoglobin? What kind of process is that? Anabolic also. How about making more myosin, actin? Anabolic. Anabolic, okay. How about the process of aerobic respiration? Either using fats, amino acids, or, or uh, glucose. Would that be anabolic or catabolic? Catabolic, why? What is going on? What is happening to these molecules? Breaking them down. Yeah, we're breaking them down. Yeah, so the mitochondria literally chops up the carbons between these molecules, and so that would be an example of a catabolic process. Aerobic respiration is a catabolic process. Glycolysis, part of the aerobic respiration, is catabolic. Citric acid cycle, all of that. Okay, now, what in which the body can create amino acids at will by having some amino acids, not having another, and just manufacturing it from an existing amino acid. And who will do that, actually? So right now you're lacking particular amino acids. Say it's tyrosine. But you have other ones available. Can you create? Tyrosine? Can you create that amino acid that you don't have a lot of right now? Yes, if it's a non-essential amino acid, you can make it. And what is that process called? Yes, transamination. It's transferring an amino group onto another acid, creating a brand new amino acid. Remember that? Transamination. Where does it occur in what organ? In the liver. In the liver. 
the largest metabolic organ. And so just about anything about metabolism, the answer is liver. Okay? Transamination. Now say that we want to use an amino acid to generate ATP from it. Is that favorable? Does the body like to do that? No. Generating energy from amino acids. No, okay. But the liver can do it. Why does it primarily occur in the liver? Metabolism of amino acids to get ATP. Why only in the liver? That's right, because met metabolizing amino acids creates what? Toxic product. Which one? Ammonia and urea. Okay, and so ammonia is highly toxic, right? Ammonia is highly toxic, and so the liver cells can convert it to urea. What is that cycle called? The deamination, also known as the urea cycle. So the deamination occurs before the urea cycle is to create the ammonia, right? If we deaminate an amino acid means that we are removing the amino group and the rest of the amino acid is used to generate ATP. But the amino group becomes ammonia because it's just released in fluid. We're not putting it onto another amino acid. We're actually freeing up an amino group. That amino group becomes ammonia but com by combining to another hydrogen ion. And so it's now NH4. Remember that? And the NH4 plus now has to be converted to urea, and that's called the urea cycle. Who does that again? The liver, the hepatocytes. And now then urea can be excreted, and it's the largest waste product in urine. Ammonia should be very little in urine, unless somebody has liver failure. Then they'll have lots of ammonia in their urine, and increased toxicity in the body. Does that answer some of your metabolism questions? Yes? No? <laughs> Why does the amount of ATP produced from amino acids vary? Why couldn't I give you a number? No, why does the amount, the number of ATPs produced by a single amino acid will vary? Like for sugar, we said it's 36 ATPs per sugar. Why couldn't I tell you how many ATPs per amino acid? That's right, because different amino acids have different number of carbon atoms. They vary by the R group. Some R groups are long chain, some are short chain. Some are just one carbon, some are five carbon, some are three carbon. So that creates a different chain, a different structure of an amino acid, one abundant in carbons or another not so much. And so ATP production depends on the number of carbons that are in a molecule. Since glucose is always C6, H12, O6, we know that per glucose molecule it would be 36 ATPs. But for an amino acid we can, I can't tell you because it will depend on which amino acid. For this one, we need to know the function and disorders for all these. For 31? Mm, no, don't worry about that one. 31, it's okay. We didn't talk about that. What about 30? So, insulin, glucagon, you need to know. Uh, the other ones. Those are from the um, endocrine chapter, so just review them. I mean, thyroxine is made by the thyroid gland, human growth hormone by the anterior pituitary, and epinephrine by the adrenal medulla. Okay. Um, what is a good source of carbohydrates? in our diet, what gives us carbohydrates? What do we eat to gain that? Bread. 
grains, fruit, veggies, pasta, rice. Protein? Meat, cheese, anything else? Beans? Legumes. Okay. And fats? Cheese, dairy, milk. Okay. Anything else? Meat? Oils. Meat and oils. Fish, yes. Oils and saturated oils. <laughs> fats. Any other questions? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we just had all the puzzles.